Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and I'm actually here with Matt, so it's going to get a little confusing. Yeah. But go ahead and introduce yourself and your place here. Yeah, I'm Matt Garibrandt. Um, this is my lab, pretty much, man. This is O'Malley's Morphs. We're located in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, yeah. First of all, Tennessee is an awesome place. I'm really excited to be here. we got some awesome snakes to show you that I don't have in my collection. So you guys are going to get to learn with me while I learn, because... Yeah, I got the ball python thing. I do a lot with that, and I do a lot with rattlesnakes. But that does not make me an expert in everything, so I'm going to be learning today, and I'm going to go to class right here. Uh, before we get started, if you haven't checked out O'Malley's Morphs, you should. I've watched all their videos. really cool stuff. You're not even trying to make a dime off your YouTube either, so he's just doing it for the love. You get some rock and roll music on there and everything else. So definitely go look at that. There's a lot of interesting stuff and kind of follow his path as he goes through. Um, so why don't we tell, tell me what we're going to be learning about today, because we got a specific thing we're here to film, right? Yeah, yeah, we're here to film uh, the three different species of short tails, um, Python Curtis, Python Bronger's Mai, Python uh, Brighton Steeny, mm -hmm. the, uh, um, the three subspecies of short tails, man. Awesome. There, there's technically, like we were saying, four, but there's so little even collected about the fourth, it's, you know. It's not really in the pet trade it's yet. Not, it's it's not much. at all, at all, yeah. No. So. And, and for you guys that watch us a lot, you know we've got the two blood pythons for current. Blood pythons used to be considered a short tail or they all are, together, they're, right? They're, yeah, but they're, 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 they were they were one species, and then they became their own subspecies. Okay, yeah, so they, they all they got broken just, apart. Yeah, they kind of just pushed them all together. I mean, you know, and the Barkers, Tracy and Dave Barker from VPI, really put a lot of time. Karen Norris, I mean, so many people, you know, put put yeah. their time into. Is there something in the reptile hobby that the Burkers don't have their fingerprints on somewhere? No. I mean, I can't think of it, man. <laughs> they, <laughs> those guys, those guys have been doing it so long, and they've got a connection to everything, everything. somewhere, man. <laughs> and they've been doing it since the 90s. You yeah, know? Like yeah. when you could import these things, they were doing yeah. that. I mean, they got their fingerprints on this. I mean, they have exanthic lines named after them. Yeah, like, there's... Yeah. So many things that they've got their fingerprints on the reptile hobby. I gotta get there to meet those folks sometime. Uh, so these are watching. I mean, you always know we have two blood pythons at home, but just two. Both are supposed to be matrix, and that's it. That's the extent of blood pythons. Those are my first blood pythons. I kind of was learning as I go. So this is such an opportunity for me. So what do you want to start with? Um, I think we should start with my personal favorite, which is a Sumatran short tail. Um, you have, with Sumatrans, you have orange heads, chrome heads, you have blacks. Um, and what we have in the lab, we have a couple baby, well, they're not babies, but they're yearling um, uh, Python Curtis, which is the orange heads. Well, Python Curtis is Sumatran short tails, but we have a, a quite a few of the orange heads. Um, we have adults, we have yearlings, so I think we should start there, man. I'm all for it. Now, while you pick your first thing to get out, something you mentioned to me before we started was... Well, the blood pythons have this reputation that's not completely deserved anymore because of captive it's breeding. Not. It's not. Uh, the know. Sumatrans are actually even more chill. They are. Than the they, they've actually always, in my opinion, ever since I, the, they were the first species or subspecies of short tail that I acquired. And yeah. it was just easy to fall in love with, man, because they have that really cool head. And, the, you know, yeah. I mean, they look like what they look like, but they have, in my opinion, the temperament. Of a ball python, so I Which think is neat. yeah, and they're so. still going to get thick bodied and everything oh, yeah. else, right? Oh yeah, they'll still be the monsters. They're, for people that want bigger snakes, they'll they'll have that be able to get that too. So perfect. So well, let's, let's look at one. Let's yeah. do it. Um, this the thing about a lot of short tails is line breeding and um, just kind of keeping what's what in in the how it's supposed to be you know um you wouldn't you wouldn't breed an orange head sumatran which is this this is actually that genetic stripe line i was showing you earlier this was produced by a man named ryan boyd ryan um specializes in the mouth he's fine oh, ryan, he's ryan. gonna eat one of your dudes but you guys don't know question girls also got the dog on the leash so he's <laughs> gonna eat an info card now sorry she's a she's a boss for sure but uh ryan boyd um kind of pioneered these genetic stripes for me and let me in on the project here in a minute we'll look at an adult well not an adult female but she's on her way to being an adult 
Um, this is just one of the sisters. We have three females that Ryan produced that are about this size. One's a little bit uh, bigger, but you know, obviously they... Uh, now, I just, I love the head on that. Yeah. Too. Oh man. It is such a... Nice and sleek. Yeah. Um, awesome head. Now this is from that same line of Ryan's animals. This is a bigger female, same line. Oh man. And again, that orange head. That orange head, man. Just gorgeous. Now uh, the her, you can see where she has the completely orange head. And that, in my opinion, is completely and totally stellar because See, there's nothing really to be worried about, man. No. They're, they're amazing animals. And the side of their heads, you know, she's just beautiful, man. I and just I, love that color. I yeah. mean, that really just pops. And then, too, it almost reminds me a little bit of a gaboon in the fact that it's got that line down 100%. the head. 100%. Which is going to make it look like a leaf when it lays there. That's yep. what that vein is for. So now, this is, this is a different breeder's line. This is um, a line by a man named Tracy Barker who is, uh, or not Tracy Barker, uh, sorry, this is um, Trace Harden. <laughs> Her, <laughs> we got the Barkers on the brain. Oh, that's it, man. The animal's name is Tracy as well because of Trace produced it. But Trace Harden produced yeah. this orange head, and you can see the head's completely different. I Absolutely. Mean, um, now, this one even has more of the Gaboon Viper look with the does. spots behind the, like, I mean, it is, I got to just pet that. Yeah, man. Oh, they feel so cool. Go ahead. <laughs> Look at that. And of course the body just, oh man, good weight on them. Just beautiful snake. Yeah, go up and check the camera out. You can't eat that. I promise. <laughs> Not food. The tail. Now, what we were talking about earlier as well is there isn't actual morphs in these. What there is, is um, genetically line bred lines like this one. You can see the difference in her. She has more of the genetic stripe whereas this one has right. the stripe this one has a way more contained I can't get this. yeah you can see we're talking about how it kind of just kind of goes through here and stays linked up without breaking as much as like this one's breaking right here the the yeah. line right goes through there the yeah. brown how this one is a little bit darker and on on Labu, the male you can definitely see it he's he's such a stellar example of the animal I mean, such an insane animal, but so I'll these get the try to crawl around my neck like a good old friend. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go from the orange heads to the only other, the only other species we have here in the lab are the blacks. Now these were produced by a woman named April Homick. Um, but these are, this is Morticia. We have Morticia and Gomez. They were produced from a black to a chrome pairing. The chrome is the animal we don't have. Um, if, you, if you got one of these from a black to a black pairing, mm -hmm. it would be the darkest animal. I mean, it would almost be like literally like just a sleek, nice black animal. You would still have this kind of saddling, but um, you wouldn't really, it, it would just be darker. That's awesome. You know, such Which a, to me is so like, I mean, even, you know, snakes are trendy. Yeah. <laughs> so certain things go through trends and phases. They I think do. Right White now, snakes, yeah, black snakes. The yeah. dark is kind of just coming into its own. So we've worked so yeah. many years, at least in the ball python world, to brighten, brighten, brighten. And that's it. And now but the dark the is The darkness is, man, you have to have that. You do. You know? Um, so, yeah, those are the uh, those are the Sumatrans, I guess. If those we're, are cool. If we're going to keep rolling, I would say probably need to check out Python Brighton Steenie, which is... Uh, Borneo short okay. tails. Um, so we can just go back over here. Absolutely, man. Um, You're running the show. I'm <laughs> learning today. This is, uh, I can show you um, a lot of what we have is uh, some uh, Keith Brady line animals. This is a female. She's only a couple years old. Or a couple, a couple months old. I was going to say, this man, is, they don't uh, grow very fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> We're stunting their growth here in Tennessee. But this is actually a fade Borneo. Now, like I said, they don't have morphs. If there was anything that had a morph to it or any subspecies that I feel like had more 
morph-esque genetics, it would probably be the Borneos. Um, just because, you know, you, you can line breed these just like you would ball pythons and where you would get, let's say you had four eggs, you're always going to get a normal blood, uh, ball python. They'll breed for you in the same way. You'll get um, normal Borneos. You'll get high quality fades, low quality fades. So if I breed her, if I bred her to another fade, fade to fade pairing, that would produce super, super nice faded animals. So the way this is working too, because I know most of my folks that watch are probably more into ball pythons than anything. Right, right. Is when you have morphs and ball pythons, you know, it's going to pass on, you know, the half the offspring. Right. And it's that morph genetic. Whereas here with the lion breeding, it's more of eyeballing over time. Right. And picking a look. Polygenics. Kind of like, yeah. you know, like always talk about our spider line, we try to get rid of all the dots in spider. And you do that by picking your holdbacks. Right, right. So to get the different looks in here, that's what people have done over generations. Over generations of it, yeah. They've just kind no. of... No. <laughs> We're having to yell at the dog. What are you doing now? <laughs> he was chewing on the leash. Oh. Yeah, he I say sorry. He ate one of your cars. It's all right, My buddy. dog's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so this is... Get over there, dog. <laughs> Get it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a puppy. He is just a pup. So this is the marble we were talking about earlier oh, this thing's one of my favorites you showed me i man. just love the pattern the sides and oh man yeah so this i have another marble down here another male this is miss audrey we have hank and miss audrey she can be a little testy um which is just part of the uh how it goes messing with short tails but now the head on that one almost looks orange too, but it's it not is. an orange head, is it? No, the, a lot of Borneos will have um, the orange-esque heads. But the orange heads will be like three shades brighter. Yeah, Okay. But definitely. That's and they're, a, they're a completely different species as well. That's true. So we're talking about, I gotta see, that's why I'm still learning. Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. But so, I mean, yeah. Um, uh, Borneos, that's where we're at. This is... A this is a Keith Brady line. Oh, can you see that one, dear? Side swipe. And you can just see how the sides of the animal are completely gone. And this one has that really nice peach stripe on the side of its head. Oh yeah, you can see that color just above the like the yeah. brown. Just there's like almost reminds me of a fish. Yeah. Like how a fish has that stripe on down its back. Yeah. yeah. Now, something that we should talk about, I think that is very important to talk about with these animals. A lot of people will, a lot of ball python people will see this, um, see the spine and they'll instantly think, you know, oh, the animal is underweight. The right. animal is, uh, you know, I'm not taking care of that. I mean, it is what it is. But the thing with these animals is there's so much literature on um, how easily they can become obese. You know, they, most of these sh animals, the short tails will literally eat every time you offer them food. So uh, uh, rule of thumb, um, rule of thumb is, is you want to see that really nice ridge on their back that lets you know without, because <laughs> they get weighed by the pound. Yeah, not the gram. Not the gram. So, I mean, it's a little, unless you have a fish scale, you know, it's not that easy really to contain this huge animal like I'll, we'll show you in here. So, it's a little bit easier to see the, the, the spine protruding. So, that way you know, okay, cool. It's still, it's not obese. One, right. If it was an entire round sausage, man, you got a problem. It, it can it can affect their health. It can you know shorten their lifespan. I mean, there's a lot of things that you know, you know, with an obese snake like that that can can cause a lot of problems. Now, with that, about how often are you feeding these guys? I feed these guys smaller meals once a week. If they look like they, this is also another Borneo. This is a super stripe Borneo from a Keith Brady line. Um, and this is a ridge we're talking about. This here. is the yeah. ridge, yeah. And you can see here again how, and every one of them, you'll see that. The big girl in there, the VPI big girl, she doesn't really have that, but she's also about an 18 pound animal. 
Okay. So, I mean... So, is there a size where you stop looking for that? And I'm asking my own uh, animals here, because I may be overfeeding mine, to be honest. No, I mean, I, I only feed her. You can see her, you know, she eats every two weeks two large rats. So, two, I mean, okay. I, and that's really it, you know. I, a lot of these things, with these animals, you can really judge what they need to eat, when they need to eat. I have a batik over there that hasn't eaten in, you know, two weeks just because he literally looks swollen. Right. So, I mean, I'm not going to keep feeding him, you know. If you feed him a bigger meal, you can almost slack back and not have to worry so much about okay. feeding them the next week because their metabolism is so slow. You know, right. something we talked about was they don't, you know, use the bathroom. Um, <laughs> but maybe four or five times a year so and that's something that new new breeders or new keepers when you get that animal and you're like oh my god it hasn't used the bathroom i've got ball pythons and king snakes that poop every week and yeah this isn't happening and, and his tail will look like it needs to oh poop, yeah and you're yeah. like oh my goodness but they there's nothing you can do these animals every time i change out their uh substrate which i know you may have seen i keep my blood pythons on craft paper that we can just pick up at Home Depot. It's yeah. the easiest thing because of the fact how much they urinate. That's that's very important. You know they, yep. you don't want them to sit in their own their own urine. Um, but one thing I do just as a rule of thumb, like I was saying, every time I change out their substrate, I will soak the animal. I have a separate tub over here that is the same size as a 64 quart that I set up with warm water. Every time I change the animal out, I change the water. I mean, it, it's a process, but it's what you have to do. Right. You know, there's, unfortunately, when you take, well, it's not unfortunate. It's unfortunate to some people, I guess, but when yeah. you take these animals on, that's what you have to do. So it sounds like overall, they're a little more work than a ball python. They are. Is. You can't really, you can't really just kind of stick them in uh, a tub and forget about them, you know, because they're going to urinate a lot more, number right. one. Um, and it seems like their urine is so strong um their their urine is so strong it like uh, it'll knock you out when you walk in the door <laughs> if you're like poof okay i gotta clean <laughs> clean the tubs <laughs> this is crazy urine so but that's oh that's probably the most notable borneos um that i would pull out to show you guys the rest is 100 percent I mean, the Bronger's my the blood pythons. So well, let's see some of those because that's what I think we have. Yeah. Uh, so I want. If you have see. Matrix, then yeah, that's what you've got. Now this is the girl that I will always show first. Again, there's that nice, nice ridge. You know, she's she's in good health. She's a good size, and she doesn't look underweight at all. No. So no. that's very important. Can you imagine this animal if she was, you know, obese and you didn't see that? It would almost yeah you should common sense should tell you okay this is a little bit big but <laughs> this is a t positive vpi produced um this came from a breeder in chattanooga named uh tony jones uh richard jones reptiles i got her at tinley last year um he saw me he's a good friends with my sister um and uh he saw me eyeballing Matt Minatola's booth and he was like, man, I got something for you. And he kind of just gave it to me for insanely cheap, but she's beautiful. Isn't that um, funny? You drive to Chicago to buy a reptile from a guy down the street. Yeah. That's yeah. how it, that's how it works. I did that in Florida. I went and bought it from a bunch of people from Kansas and Florida. So I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, this is just the T positive. So, so these do have some morphs in them though. Like this isn't a lion bread. This is a morph. Correct? That that is that is a technically a morph. Yeah, because but you don't have the hundreds and fifty right. like you do. Ball yeah, pythons. yeah, and they're a lot. The morphs are a lot, in my opinion, more difficult to spot. Some people would probably say that that's not true. Maybe I just don't have the amount of time to look at. Yeah, you know. A, a clutch of 30 animals and go okay this one's this this one's this this <laughs> one's this because it's so line bred you know yeah. i mean i would have to do the same thing i do with some of my ball pythons and that's reach out to people that know more than me you know right. and i think that is something to hit on with that is paying your respects and dues to people that have paved the way before well, you and the hobby you know is so good about that yeah and there are people who like you know are they get into certain morphs really deep and have like i have my things i really like 
you know, I really like my Blitz stuff. I really like my Exantic stuff. So I can look at a lot of stuff and say, yeah, I see Blitz there. Or, no, I don't think it's there. Right. But there's other morphs. Like, you know, you did a video talking about, talking about lace. I've never worked with lace. I couldn't see it. Like, you know, I'd have to have somebody show me and yeah. show me the markers, show me to look, and then I contact. actually had uh, Marshall Platts oh. from um, Marshall Law Morphs. Uh, yep. He helped me so much with this last lace clutch, man. Yeah. He is just completely and totally um, irreplaceable, to be honest. Uh, you know, we'll we'll look at some lace stuff if you want. Before Absolutely, you take off. because I've never like gotten a chance to really see it up close okay. and to see what the markers are. Yeah. So I got to learn some ball python stuff while I'm here too, Let's and that's it, the man. whole point. Like I don't, you know, people when you do these videos, people are always like, oh yeah, I learned so much watch this from this. I'm thinking. I gotta go learn from people too. Like I'm not, you know, I tell people all the time, don't base what you know off just me. You've got right. to go to other sources. Yeah. Because I know this little pie wedge, and it's a whole big thing, big and pie. I've got just this. <laughs> yeah. You need to learn from other people too. So this is my chance to do the same. Awesome. Well, let me show you a couple awesome. of these. Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll hit up on this T. Since we saw the T positive, let's look at the T negative, because there is in blood pythons. There is a T positive and a T negative albino. Right. This is the T negative, which, in my opinion, Ooh. is just absolutely beautiful. That thing is awesome. I just love the color. On yeah. That. It's almost like a cream sickle. His name is actually Cream, but that's a Wu Tang reference. You know, I bet those things sell so well. Oh, around man. Here. Yeah. The reason I mean, is because for you college football fans, I mean, that yeah. contains a lot of the colors. <laughs> that's of, the, that's the I mean, Even the pattern, you know, they do that checkered. That's like, that's like, a, you know. It's like a UT that's snake. That's like the Knoxville snake right there. They'll, yeah, the UT, University of Tennessee snake. They'll have to change the mascot to a T negative T negative. Hell, I bet Peyton Manning needs one of those in his house. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so this is the batik I was telling you about. Now, the, this batik. And that T negative was actually produced by the oh, same man. Oh, man. Yeah. This is a Sean Tucker production. Sean's a really cool guy out of North Carolina. Just, you know, one thing that's very important in this animal is just beautiful, man. The pattern of that is so busy and crazy. I love this little black dots above its eyes. That's probably my favorite part. Oh, yeah. I'm just looking at how just almost digital camo it is all over yeah. the sides and then that pattern is, this almost looks like a, a burmese morph to me through here yeah uh probably what the morph is this on the is um, it reminds me of but to see the thing with the uh and you can see these aren't the animals that we were told they were 10 years ago no because they've just been it's been bred out of them you know but uh well there's not I mean, most of these are captive bred captive bred for generations instead yeah. of being a wild caught and brought in and being cranky and pissy 100 percent. you know and a wild caught imported snake is never going to be as friendly as captive bred and something that we were talking about is the morph aspect of it the uh batik and the matrix there's that you can just combine all that stuff and there's just so many crazy morphs, man. Whew, so well, this, in this this is an ivory. Okay, so this is a matrix to matrix. This right? is a super matrix produced by Nick Bettini from Cold Blooded Earth. Um, this guy will go to our matrix T positive VPI girl. Um, such a beautiful and Nick produces nothing but hot fire anyway, man. Um, so you can run. So I mean, with these you have. The matrix morph, because that's more of a morph than correct. Yes. And then the two albinos. Uh, so you've got several things going on. But Which he is uh, he's also 100% um, het T positive. Okay, so, so he'll make some matrix Make some albinos. matrix T positive albinos. Make some ivory T positive okay. albinos. We're working so. towards probably an ivory albino. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess ivory T positive albino. You would have the ivory albino right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah, man. That'll be beautiful. So let's look at this big girl over here. Let's this do it. Is, uh, this is, this was a, a personal gift to myself from Richard uh, Jones, Tony Jones. This is Bertha. Now she is a VPI produced, probably about a 20, 30 pound. So this is your, your typical what people think of, right? As far as size goes. Big, heavy body. Same. Even here, you can still see that ridge. Yeah. A little bit. So she's not overweight. And 20 to 30 pounds. That's a lot of snake. She's only three years old. Oh, wow. Okay, I feel a little better. I was worried I was overstuffing mine. No. But she's, okay. She's three, four years old. She will she has never been bred. She will be bred this this uh, 
this fall. Hopefully, if, if the male gets a little bigger, if not, then she, she can wait. Now, it's three years about the maturity time on yeah. this. So, similar yeah, yeah. to ball pythons on that. Pretty much, yeah, okay. three, four years. A lot of people will grow them really slow. You know, and yeah. th that's actually not a bad thing to do. You know, um, you cut down completely and totally on obesity that way. Right. Um, it's all about the long game, really. You yeah. Know? Um, the long game, one thing I've noticed 100% with blood pythons and short tails is quality over everything. Over everything, you know, and it's the same way with ball pythons you know but we're getting there yeah it hasn't always been that way we're starting to move that direction yeah and that's one reason there are the animals that are here are here there's not a plethora of them but they come from the best places you can get the animals right that you want you know that's something when i got into the ball pythons i didn't you know i was you know uh just anxious to get into something to right. kind of occupy my time. And um, I was just answering calls on Craigslist, picking up pastels and yeah. whatever, you know. I, I, it was three, four years ago. I, I think we all have done that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just wanted to do it. I yeah. didn't care. You know, it yeah. wasn't very important. I just wanted to experience it, do it. I kept, you know, animals prior about 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. I had... You know, coastal carpets. I had uh, big I tegus. Carpets. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I've had all those before, but time took over and they ended up moving on. Yeah. Um, and whenever time didn't take over anymore, I decided, well, we're we're doing this. And this year actually was the first year. Actually, this month was the first month we've been able to pay rent with snake money. So awesome! Isn't yeah, that a great feeling, <laughs> dude? Yeah. I mean, there's not much like that, and I called everybody in the family, and I was like, "Hey, uh, guess what?" <laughs> and how many of them said, "Oh, you're breeding snakes? That'll never work." That's not gonna. Never, never, never. They all kind of at first were like, you know, everybody besides. I've always had an insane support system, yeah. but my grandfather, once he kind of crunched the numbers, he's in, you know, uh, old. Uh, he's literally a rocket scientist, you know, nice. I mean, the man works, he, he retired from the plants in Oak Ridge. So, I mean, numbers are everything. And once he kind of started seeing the numbers churning, he was like, all right, all right. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So he actually, one of the most in insane things that has ever happened to me is he came to me and wanted to invest in the business and he actually gave us a little bit of money to throw towards a couple projects, you know, and be like, here, I'll, you've kind of, you know, he was very proud of the things we had accomplished. That's awesome. And that felt really That's good. Awesome. So, yeah. so I, know, I mean, we had a few people that believed in us, but most people, when I started, were like, really? Yeah. Snakes? Really? Like, what the hell? You know, believe it or not, my mother-in-law, of all people. Uh, she never watches these, so I'm not going to talk. Be nice about it. <laughs> my mother-in-law, of all people, is one of the few people who's like, and we we just got together, and she was telling her, I I think that's gonna work. And she hates snakes, but she was all about it. So her her mom was actually really supportive of it. That's and awesome. my grandfather as well was supportive. But most of my family was like, what? Yeah. People I work with were like, okay, whatever. So now, you know, for me it was when we I make a car payment with with reptiles for the most part. And so then it turned into like, oh, you see that car out there? Yeah, snakes bought that. Yeah. That's my toy. And it'd be like, oh, oh, so now it's just kind of my way of, you know, throwing up the, yeah, I so do, right? <laughs> yeah. The first person I actually called was my mother-in-law. I was like, guess who paid rent this month? And she was like, I guess you did. And I was like, no, no. She looked at my wife and she was like, did you pay rent, honey? And so it was, she knew what was coming. She was like, no. And I said, the snakes did. <laughs> the, the stuff you complain about in the third bedroom did. That's right. That's right. It was <laughs> so, amazing. It's amazing when you feel that corner kind of turn. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. All right, what are they else? Let's look at the lace really quick. And i got to give my wife's hand a break. So I know she's going to get tired. We've got to go film for Patreon. But i got to see this lace because I've never seen these before. So this is a single gene female. Let me get a couple Ooh, shots. I'm in the way here. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. It's a tiny, tiny room. So that this helps with holding heat, and I think that's you know, bigger space can be a problem sometimes. Is a single gene female lace from CV Exotics. Okay. Uh, 
the guys at CV Exotics um, really kind of, along with Dan and a couple of the guys at Nerd, really kind of helped found this gene. She's a little testy. I think she's closer to the uh, wild, the wild import that came. Um, just because of her attitude, you can almost tell. But what you're looking for. Almost every one of the alien heads is going to have a keyhole, um, right? Similar to hurricane, all that type of stuff. I can't keep holding. That's alright, you're fine. Um, and what else you're looking for is one thing that Marshall kind of explained to me is the popcorn-looking little things on the belly. Okay, That's so that, kind of what you're seeing there. Cause yeah, I'm seeing the keyhole. Maybe they almost like a Mojave keyhole. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you can see the belly. Um, kind of with the popcorning aspect also one thing to look for is their necks you can see how what that white comes up on her neck right there okay i have a a whole clutch of them but they're in shed so i would show you let's see now these are all it's insane how quick these sold man this but these this is the again it's in shed but this is the firefly uh lace so oh, wow. that's pretty crazy once this guy sheds out man it's going to be so insane. it really made the pattern crazy in there yeah and it brought the white up now there's a super form called the white lace okay what that's going to do is that's going to throw that white all the way half up the body and it's a white line it's pretty intense um, there's a couple in there. That's about the best one out of that clutch. Awesome. Those look good. This is a morph I haven't gotten to see up close. I've only seen it in pictures and pictures, which I know is what we're people here as a camera. Yeah. It doesn't quite do everything justice because the colors don't always come out perfect. Yeah, yeah. And so I also, they seem dark to me. They too. are, man. They so they're going to add that darkness as well along the back. Yeah. And then on the back of it, on that adult, we get all the keyholing. It seemed like there was almost this full color pattern and where the alien has normally be, it's like, they're like dotted tiny. eyes, tiny, yeah. 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 So I kind of noticed that too. So it, it's really apparent it's not a normal. It's right, apparent right. something's going on. I've got one over here that's a butter bee lace. That's absolutely insane, man. So we're talking about, uh, should be spider, spider butter, or... and then lace in there as well, and pastel too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And it did the same thing with the white on the sides, you can yeah. see. And it's a really clean line on the white. Yeah. And it comes up really high, almost like a Almost like a calico. Yeah, but not probably as far as a calico does on right. the back. And the head stamp. More straight than the calico is. Like that line is more consistent than the calico. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But this, this, uh, we got that on the chase auction a while back. But yeah, that's the lace stuff. Super excited to work with the lace stuff. Um, and that's it, man. So. Awesome. Well, looks good. Well, I appreciate you showing us around. I appreciate all the information about the short tails yeah, and the bloods. Uh, Kurt's going to be disheartened because he, <laughs> he, when we first got it, he was all excited because he wanted the blood python because the Latin name has Curtis in it. Right. But apparently not the ones we've got. So <laughs> I guess I'll go shopping for him again. Uh, anything you want to add before we go? Uh, man, you guys, thank you, Matt, so much for coming by. Oh, I appreciate um, you having bringing us. Bringing everybody over. Uh, you guys check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Um, all at O'Malley's Morphs, definitely check us out on YouTube, you know, and that's it. And we'll have the links in the description for you to make it easy. Just go click on them. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to slide over to Patreon, Patreon, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Take it easy. Awesome. Can question girl ask a question first? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> question girl so, to do her job. My question's for Matt. You had mentioned the temperature difference that having a different temperature yes for very good point very good is point important that you shouldn't have the same one as your balls yeah Can you expand on that a little bit yes yes very very good question very good question we usually run our short tails at at most 84 degrees um and that's usually when they're digesting a meal um a common misconception is that you can just put them in a rack with a ball python. Where we have them in a rack with a ball python, it is at the bottom of the rack. I'm constantly checking the temps. I mean, it's very important. You know, uh, the, the heat can, you know, make them regurgitate meals. It can actually affect their attitude. It can make them very, very, very angry. Um, and that's kind of wild, but yeah, a lot of keepers will just keep their short tails in a room uh, with ambient heat. See, is... and 
and I'm glad to hear that because we that means we've been we're learning something because we've been doing that wrong. Now, luckily, ours from the bottom of the rack. That wasn't because I was smart. That yeah. was just because that's how it happened. <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, it worked out well. Man. Yeah, it's easy to grab the hook and open them up, and I don't really want to open a blood at face level. <laughs> right. uh, so you know, that's that's, that's why she's right here. I mean, it still sucks to take one in the belly, but it's been much yeah. better than in the exactly. face. Exactly. So it kind of worked out for us on that, and we've always planned on putting them in their own cages like when they outgrew the rat. Because right. I don't have any bigger FP seventy, and I don't think an FP seventy is going to be appropriate for full size bloods, most likely. No, I mean that's one reason we went with the sixty four quart because these are. As these are actually bigger than the FB90s, they're just not as wide, right. but they can literally stretch out. Like right. she fits better in these technically than she, she does the FB90s. Yeah, and see, we're smaller than that by far. For a 70, which is yeah, so this yeah, which these look tiny in comparison to the 90s. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of always played on the outgrew. Hey, we're gonna put them on display cages because it's such a different animal. We want to put them on display. Now the short but, tails uh, will be able to stay. And that's not, I shouldn't say the short tails. The Sumatran short tails, they'll technically. They they could be fine in something like this. Right. For you know, I mean, it just kind of takes a little common sense almost to yeah. know you know okay, this is too small for this. Uh, right. You know, I mean, but also something to hit on is the fact that blood pythons and short tails seem to prefer a confined space just as well as right. ball pythons, but almost a little more. You know, I always find when I open mine, they're touching the sides. They are. They've gotten in there and they've they cram themselves yep. in against the sides every doing time. Well. And they'll bury. Mm -hmm. If you give them enough litter, they seem to bury. In mine do. Uh, most it made of me wonder these, if they yeah. weren't seeking heat. You know what I mean? I was like, well, maybe I don't have them warm enough on the bottom. I actually was wondering that because I kept finding that they would move the coconut. But I think they're they just, just they're to just hide. ambush hunters. Yeah. So, they so just, whoosh, they um, I don't need to add heat. As a matter of fact, it's probably lowered if anything. So yeah. I'm glad that I'm. I've You're doing that. well, though. I mean, I would say giving them a place. That's it's one thing that I'll notice. That if you have a troubled eater or whatever, mm -hmm. literally just take a piece of paper towel or something, crumble it up, throw it in the tub, and that gives them something to hide I under. Yeah. And no, that's. All they need. They're, they're neat to watch eat. You know, we yeah. do do mostly live feedings. I don't know what what you guys use here, but uh, when they take a prey, I mean, they're so strong. Oh yeah. This is boom, yep. like and it's done. And yeah. It's done like that, which yeah. I prefer. It's all right. One thing, thing that I think is cool about feeding them is if you do feed live, which we do some, we do some feed live. Most of the smaller animals we do, the bigger stuff, I would rather kind of give them pre-killed that way. You know, because you see, I put my hand in there a lot. You know? Yeah. I mean, so. But uh, one thing I've noticed is that they literally will kill the animal with about this much of their this long body. Yeah, and it it's don't take like, much. No, yep, they're done. so powerful, man. It's See, awesome. watch this. She's gonna be like, I've been holding this camera forever now. So I asked the question. Any more questions? <laughs> question, girl. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll take see you easy. next time.